look at this this is norris this is take a look at them they have you know strong nose front facing eyes and they have a tail but they are predominantly living on trees and the second category of primate like i told you primates are divided into one and two this second one is haplorini again again this is divided into new world monkeys and old world monkeys and then apes which is a further evolution let's get back to that so in this division you are looking at monkeys new world monkeys monkey as a term essentially means that it has a tail please remember this this is very important in evolution if you have to recognize a monkey it is expected to have a tail okay this new world monkeys the classification says that you know old world and new world this is from a western standpoint old world means africa is considered to be the birthplace of civilization right so it's considered old world new world because christopher columbus uh, discovered that entire americas as late as 1500s so to the western world it's as if that america didn't exist before that so they gave this nomenclature of new world monkeys so south american primates are the new world monkeys how how are they you know defined flat noses prehensile tails they use their tail to swing for grabbing okay and they're mostly arboreal meaning they can only live on trees if the trees are gone they have very difficult time surviving and that's the reason you can find them in amazon forests predominantly the second classification is old world monkeys the difference between new world monkeys and the old world monkeys is the fact that they can survive even on land they're slightly more evolved so what are the features they have tails i'm again for uh, simplifying things for you i'm dividing this caterini or old world monkeys into two different categories let's call them the tail gang and the tailless elites just for our own understanding the tail gang like baboons langurs macaques macaques are the usual monkeys that we find here right most of them they have tails but they walk on all the four quadrupedal so quadrupeds these are the features so you might get a lot of questions langurs are very important for epsc where do you find langurs all across the country macaques even probably uh, our day to day activities we'll see a lot of macaques they are the most adaptable ones and then you have after the old world monkeys you have apes humans are also apes the most evolved ape is human being let's call them the tailless elites they don't have tails but they have bigger brains and more complex societies now you might be wondering if apes are evolved does it mean that they can always live on land does it mean that they will organize themselves as society not every ape will live like that you have further division of apes into lesser apes and greater apes here is where another important question comes lesser apes this is the most important question which i am expecting this year either you will have question on langurs or apes if it comes to this what are we talking about gibbons who look gibbons just because they are apes just because they don't have tails doesn't mean they and live on trees they are great at swinging through trees and if you cut down the trees in that region even recently there is an oil exploration project that was sanctioned by the central government which is again threatening the existence of this species where will you find them this is a probable question kulonga park gibbon sanctuary where is it assam india's only gibbon sanctuary because this is the only place where you will find them. like kulak gibbon and this is the only ape species which we are failing to conserve then we come to the greater apes so you can get a lot of questions from this you have gorillas chimpanzees and the cool dude here called bonobos look how it's chilling like it's very relaxed gorillas the gentle giants as you know king kong a lot of movies were made on this chimpanzees we share 98 to 99% of dna with chimpanzees our closest relatives in terms of evolution and then you have bonobos they are the peaceful diplomats why are they called the peaceful diplomats because the way they deal with conflicts like i told you as our cranial capacities increase apes organize themselves into society two important facts that you need to know is the behavior of chimpanzees versus bonobos this cool dudes are diplomatic they sit talk they deal stuff through dna dialogue negotiation action of course we don't understand their dialogues but they do so they have social bonding grooming and physical affections to diffuse this tensions and they're very peaceful and that's the reason it is chilling like this and then we have the so called most advanced of all and we fail to learn from our cousins bonobos human beings homo sapiens and we choose to learn from chimpanzees because chimpanzees also resolve conflicts through dominance and violence bro choose violence before anything else and that's the reason we are human beings what are the takeaways from this entire discussion what is the only ape who like gibbon where would you find them 
some endangered primates like i told you macaque and langurs these are the points that you need to focus on what are the important species this one you can get questions on these four species some traps that upsc can learn orangutans gorillas chimpanzees are not found in india naturally please note this point they are not found they can be held captively but naturally no they are not found are hula gibbons monkeys no they are apes they don't have a tail tail is absent they are much more evolved monkeys will always have tails please remember that any doubts here on this topic this is a very important topic okay now let's move to the next topic that is threats to biodiversity and ecosystem disruptions see these are very uh, common topics nothing much to explain here i'll be a bit quicker here okay so you know olive litter turtles all these facts can be understood if you just read it what i i'll be giving this document to you but what is the most important takeaway is this the quick rule that you need to focus on turtles are mostly water lovers they come to the shore only for breeding season nesting etc and that's why olive litter turtles visit these places tortoises are mostly land dwellers and the most important one is star tortoises okay again like i was discussing right mumbai was supposed to have this olive ridge turtle nesting season but thanks to mumbai girls who wanted who, the curious mumbai girls who wanted to knock the shells of olive ridge turtles and disturb them they just left that place now indian star tortoises conservation prospects so this is the tortoise that we're talking about it's it's not huge it's small it's herbivores remember most of the tortoises are herbivores because they feed on leaves fruits plants they are residing on land they can afford to be herbivores it's endemic to indian subcontinent indian subcontinent not india please remember species does not have political boundaries they have geographical boundaries only land landscape based boundaries only they are found throughout indian subcontinent of course since it is so widely protected this is schedule 1 of uh, wildlife protection act and also since the trade is banned it is in sites appendix 1 next topic the age old topic of great indian bustard i don't think there is much to discuss here because i have already given this topics elsewhere as well okay so now we are talking about kashmir hangul here we are talking about a specific term called rutting mating season is also called rutting season for if you get a question on this don't get confused where will you find them Dachigam National Park in Jammu and Kashmir. This is given in many standard textbooks. What is the takeaway for us? Please remember these points. So at this point, only surviving species of red deer in India. It is not just any other deer. It's a red deer. They are not found outside India. It's endemic to Kashmir. They are not a common deer species because it's a red deer. And main threat is not poaching, but habitat loss and climate change. Because every endemic, every endemic species will face Right here. Random news, not so important, but just in case, if you have to know, I'm giving this. Namibia is planning to kill hundreds of its animals for meat because they're starving. The governments there are not able to provide enough food, food security issue. In this case, even you know, you would uh, notice that hippopotamus, rhinos, elephants, even these are targeted. Okay, these facts that I'm giving can be important. Not not really important, that important, but just in case. there was a, a couple of years ago there was a question on which place is facing acute uh, food security problem madagascar was asked in uh, probably nda or some other exam some other exam of upsc in that context i'm giving this question okay another important point is namdafa tiger reserve where is it arunachal pradesh for the first time in 12 years elephant was recorded there what is the most important point you can see here northern most lowland evergreen rainforest in the world please note this point it's enough now rata pani in madhya pradesh this is declared as a tiger reserve in this context what do you need to know first you need to know what is a tiger reserve tiger reserve is a conservation area you know this this start in many classes it will have a core area buffer area and almost 2.3% of india's geographical area is covered under this how is it created what is the role of state government a lot of people get confused here so this is important the process begins with state government's proposal it is not initiated by the center state government will identify viable tiger habitat then they will send it the send the proposal to ntca national tiger conservation authority and the ministry will review it and if it's approved state government will notify that's the reason it is in concurrent list wildlife protection can a tiger reserve be denotified no as per this section it's not important to remember the section but there is a provision in the act just understand that that 
no state government can denotify a tiger reserve unless approved by both National Tiger Conservative Authority and National Board for Wildlife. They are not created by NTCA. State government will, you know, create it. It will initiate the process and it will notify it. But approval from this is mandatory. Next up, squid. See, India is, especially the coastal areas are famous for their marine food. And if we understand them better, maybe the productivity will be improved. So in that bid, we are trying to understand the blueprint of this species. Indian squid. Here, you need to know about the classification, like group of uh, animals called molluscans. If you know the taxonomy, if you're a doctor or if you're someone good at biology, great. If you're not good at it, it's okay, ignore. There is a class of animals called molluscans. And I want you to understand that they have a certain category of animals which are smart. They survive better. And they can be further divided into celoids and nautiloids. Okay. So you have octopus, squid, cuttlefish, which have soft body. They don't have an external shell. They swim like they, uh, they are mobile. Then you consider the nautiloids. They're considered like the living fossil. They have a shell and they move like... A submarine very slow and very uh, you know secretive if you want to know the unique traits they're having highly evolved nervous system they can camouflage that's the reason they're called the living fossil and compared to submarine okay most important points that you need to know squid octopus cuttlefish these are not fish they are molluscans i mean it's rare that you know you'll get a direct question whether this is molluscan or a fish or invertebrate it's rare but if you have to take a logical guess, this point can help you indirectly. Okay. That's all you need to know. Final topic. Very important topic. Difficult to pronounce for most of us. But let's understand what this is. Zoo pharmacognosy. What does it mean? A lot of animals try to medicate themselves when they are sick. How are they able to know that? Is it like they learn that pattern? Or is it pre-programmed? It's a part of the evolution. This is what we are trying to understand better. And the study of that is zoo pharmacognosy. It's self-medication behavior observed in animals whenever something is wrong they consume this so as a part of this hindu published a lot of facts so we are trying to know those facts only that's all primates eat leaves to kill intestinal parasites it's very obvious elephants consume tree barks to induce labor this is a very important point elephants uh, and their uh, behavior was asked previously so you can expect some Question here. Parrots and macaws eat clay to neutralize toxins. So whatever is available in their vicinity, they use that material to cure themselves. Dogs and eat dogs and cats eat grass. I mean, I personally found it very curious. I saw a dog eating grass on the road. When I was a child, I first observed this and I was like, why is this eating? Like it was having an upset stomach. That's what I've realized after a lot of time. Then you have Sumatran orangutan, which is you know eating berberine even today this compound berberine is very significant for controlling diabetes apparently so this can also be an important point and finally neanderthals we were talking about apes and we said that human beings are the evolved most evolved species if you're an anthropology student you would know what am i talking about but for others neanderthals were just like human beings but much more larger in today's europe where you have this caucasus mountains they're called caucasians they had larger cranial capacities than human beings or homo sapiens and they thrived in that time but because of lack of availability of food and because they were large their energy demands were much higher during the ice age they perished because they did not have enough food they consumed chamomile to fight off infections how many of you are familiar with chamomile tea you would if you crack the exam definitely anyway <clears throat> So, this behavior is not just pertinent to primates only. It is visible in all the animals. It's not just a learned behavior. And it is linked to ethnic sciences. Like, we have a traditional knowledge digital library. This can be included in that as the observations. So, just like India as Ayurveda, there are many systems across the world, traditional medicine systems, which was again discussed in the same article. China's Zongai system is just like Ayurveda. They have their own system. Even Arabia had their own system. In the same article, a lot of medicinal plants which were discussed, Sarpaganda, Chavan Prash, Aloe Vera, all of this can be important because UPSC has a tendency of picking up from these articles. I'll be giving these notes, but you're not expected to buy hard everything like randomly. Observe what was asked, pick up those patterns and focus on those patterns. I hope you like this class and it gives you a context to prepare this random topics.
of biodiversity. You have to get your basics right. This is what I've expected you to do before this class, the basics which were discussed in the organization of PYQs, etc. After that is done, we have discussed the, P, uh, the current affairs also in the same format. I hope that gives you a structure to this entire topic. Any doubts, guys? No, sir. Great. So, I hope you enjoyed this session and uh, we'll catch up soon again. That's it for now. Thank you.